Okay, so the first thing you want to do after downloading the OD apps view is go ahead and open up the documentation and read the PDF getting started if you have not already. And also go ahead and watch the video that will be shown below here. So continuing on, we'll want to open up the main files and extract the OD apps view. So you can go ahead and do extract here. Uh, and then we'll get it right here within the folder open on this up and you'll see the OD apps view SNL so we'll go ahead and double click this and we'll open up Visual Studio 2019 and here we have Visual Studio 2019 uh, opened up the solution OD apps view and once you have seen these two finished we can go ahead and minimize these uh, solutions right here on PC will be shown up on the right on Mac it's typically on the left so the first thing that I like to do um, is first come down in here to the build menu and simply clean solution uh, just to start off fresh and we'll see here that 4 succeeded clean. If for some reason it doesn't say 4, if you for, for whatever reason you got like 2 cleaned, 2 succeeded, simply just go on build configuration manager and make sure that uh, these 4 are checked and these 2 are checked. Um, so go ahead and you can go and close that. Next, after cleaning it, you're going to want to rebuild the solution. Um, keep in mind that rebuilding might take some time uh, to do, if, depending upon how fast your computer is. Uh, but go ahead and let it do its thing. If it has any errors, um, it shouldn't, but you can go ahead, clean, and rebuild. And if it again has any errors, um, you can simply just reach out to me via email at odappsdev at gmail.com or within the comment section of where you purchased this product on Code Canyon. Perfect. So as you can see, all four have built successfully. So next thing you want to do is go ahead and start editing your uh, application or your cross-platform application. Uh, don't worry about the Droid, iOS, and UWP. Uh, solutions just yet we're actually going to be working on this one uh, just OD apps view which gets populated to the rest so continuing on here um, now if you're going to do tests and whatnot if you want to edit that um, preview a screen before uh, you want to do a bunch of different edits to it before actually publishing this app there's a uh, code inside of app.xaml.cs where you can actually change um, what page opens on the first use. So typically right now it's set for the scroller preview on the first use and then this next use it goes to the web view. But you can always change this to show that um, slider page continuously so that way you can get it down and edit it the way that you like it. So that's just a nice little tip. Um, but for the most part you don't really actually have to edit this app. You there's no reason to edit it but um, you will want to come in here to page one dot XAML double click on that one and then also click the drop down and let's go ahead and edit the code behind the dot CS file um, so first starting off here you're gonna wanna come in around line 18 and change the source here so just in this example we're gonna do it to Amazon. So for this example we're going to use Amazon.com and also we're going to want to change a few things on the back side here so opening up your code behind in page one XAML.cs you want to scroll down um, to this section here on line 74 where if j.url contains a domain name you're going to want to actually change this domain name to Amazon.com or whatever your domain name is and pretty much what this is used for is if you click a link on your website or web app that is not this or does not contain this URL it'll actually open either the default browser or suggest the appropriate app for example Facebook Twitter to actually open that link in so also continuing down here we can see um, the other URLs that we'll need to source and change. And this is based in here where we can see the different pages. So we have a home page right here. So we can change this text if we wanted to to be 
Um, well, we'll just leave it home for now. I mean, I don't know what else I would put it at. So we'll leave home for now. Um, maybe shop should be Amazon. Um, cart can be anything. So you can actually you can name these anything. Um, but I'm just going to do an example for you guys here. So coming back here, um, this is the first page. So they're all in order. Page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, page 5, or these different tabs as they may be. Um, again, you have tab one, two, three, four, five, or page. And these here is actually the icon two, which is going to be referenced at a later time. For example, home, shop, cart, favorites, or wish list, and account. And again, these can all be customized and replaced um, as well. Um, so we'll leave those just like that. And um, here we'll do. HTTPS Amazon.com and um, we'll just add a few other links here too. So Amazon Shop. Again, I don't know if these actual Amazon links uh, exist, so we'll find out. And this one is the cart. Cart might exist. Um, let's see here. Um, again, so you guys got to understand that this can be used in various manners um, on different types of web applications, websites. Um, so, yeah, um, once we have changed those URLs there, um, that takes place for um, the web view of the application. Now, um, when we come in here to the main page, this is actually where we're going to be designing that first startup um, preview that was shown um, within the actual application. So we have a few different things here within uh, our items list, and that's going to be the button. It's going to also have a, a type, an image source, a name, price, title. Uh, background color and also a description so you know we'll want to edit these to as you may need them so depending upon the app that you're creating you might want to change these if maybe a game maybe for a web shop or a professional service business um, you can actually edit these to your liking and that way it's more understandable instead of start saving now it could be uh, click to learn more or you know you could just keep them all as the same button skip app intro it's completely up to you um, as, as well as changing these uh, image sources here um, again for um, UWP so UWP stands for universal windows application and when you want to go ahead and reference an image here you'll just place them kind of like they are here just directly within um, the source here. You'll just click and drag and drop them in here. And try and reference the names appropriately that way you don't have any errors within your build um, and if you need to replace it, for example if you're dropping in page 1.png just go ahead and replace that image no problem. Um, I recommend you guys creating higher sized images as they're downsized and they'll look much better and actually have a overall look and feel to your application. So you can go ahead and drag and drop these images here. You can also find them within the file explorer by going uh, UWP um, and you'll find them all right here and you can see the different asset sizes and uh, what you might want to create your apps uh, or your images for and then simply replacing them from this solution explorer um, because if you do it from here from the file explorer, you might not actually see them uh, come up within your app for some reason. It's a little uh, wonky with Visual Studio 2019, but needless to say, it still works just the same. Uh, again, with iOS, you'll have it in your resources folder, so that's from view to iOS. Down here, resources, and there you have your asset images that you can also replace. Um, an interesting note is if you are using uh, or if you have 
Uh, any animation files that you want to also incorporate within this application is super easy to use. Uh, it comes pre-installed with Lottie, uh, so if you are able to access lottiefiles.com, you will actually be able to get a whole wide range of free animations that you can include within your application. For example, if you want to change the loading screen, you can just replace uh, Lottie or loading Lottie J JSON with your loading uh, image, and it'll actually use that animation. Um, likewise, if uh, you want to use it within uh, those carousel items, you can also go ahead and programmatically include those JSON files as well as including uh, using Lottie there. But keeping it straight towards the uh, resources here, um, this is where you would include any of those JSON Lottie files or PNGs and JPEGs that you might have. Um, Android, when you come into uh, odapps.view.droid, you'll go ahead and do the resources, and that's where you have the different drawables and mini maps. So here is where the uh, app icons are, so you'll want to change these for the icons, and all of these ones have your primary images across the application and their um, respectable definition size. Uh, drawable is where uh, one image size is placed for these different images on the tabs. And that pretty much covers those images and files for these different um, devices. And now this is all cross-platform, so you can build on Droid, Android, iOS, and Windows. You can also add more different platforms, for example, Ubuntu, Xbox, Windows Phone, Apple Watch, um, a bunch of different platforms you can actually start and incorporate in this template for if you have the time to kind of edit and make it work for that template. But to test it out, um, depending upon what platform you want to use it for, since we have done a rebuild, I'm going to show you a universal uh, Windows. So I've loaded this application before, so it does have the history of me loading it previously. Um, so I'll also show a example on my phone doing the preview walkthrough of showing the start now, skip intro, bestsellers, as, as well as this here too. We're running on Windows, so you just simply click local machine. <coughs> and we can see here that current deployment, the existing app will be uninstalled and the app's current state will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? Simply click on yes. All right, and perfect. So at first it was Fashion Nova and now it's Amazon. If we click on a link here, we'll see here that it looks like we took back to Amazon.com. It doesn't look like they have shop. Cart doesn't exist. Um, if you do wish list, we got the wish list and account. So we got a few of these links here. and We can see where once we click on it, it pops up the loading. Um, and same thing here where if we do today's deals, we could see today's deals, but if we were going to, uh, let's say, an off-site link for, for example, Zappos. So we can actually see here, after clicking on the, the link Zappos, it opens up in Chrome um, as expected. Now, if we were to say, let's try and go to their help center, and I think there might be an email. Um, no, it doesn't seem like there's an email anywhere here. Um, but yeah, if there was an email, then it would take them off-site, but we can see here that everything that's utilizing Amazon.com is kept on the actual application here, as expected, which is fantastic. So, um, And if we wanted to preview that, um, say, main page or scroller, view like I was telling you before if you've run the app before many times like I have then it's cached in your settings here that you have actually launched this application so you would actually type in main page like so 
That way you would actually launch the main page uh, the first time instead of only the first time. You'll actually launch it the second time as well. So including this within the app.xaml.code behind, we just change that to main page run on local machine. And now we can see here the um, the app slider within um, Windows. Uh, so to move, it's scroll up or down, and on phones you simply swipe it, and uh, it works good here like this. Um, you know you can go full screen. Uh, works the same either way, uh, just as you would expect on any generic uh, Windows application. Um, this looks seem to be looks like the best. Um, but you know this also doesn't look too bad either you can see orange awesome and you can actually change these and then um, so these buttons could all be unique for when you want a user to actually access your application and that's when they would go in here and it would load up the page as normal um, and yeah so that's pretty much it we want to come back in here and change this to page one though so that way when you actually go ahead and release this application first it'll launch the slider view on its first use and then on its next use it'll launch actual page one so that way it doesn't have to keep going back through the walkthrough um, simply save all and now we're ready to let's go ahead and test this on the Android devices so we'll select Android and change this to release And from release, uh, we'll go ahead and select on Droid as well and just come into build. And we'll select on archive. Now you'll want to select on archive and it'll start to archive your solution right here. And once your solution is done archiving, you'll be able to sign it. Now I recommend just creating a simple signing key. Um, that way you can sign these applications and what I do is I actually put them straight onto my device that way I can test them uh, instantly without having to use the emulator but you could also use the emulator built within um, this Visual Studio services um, but I like to use the real world devices and that's just you know what I choose but it's very easy let this thing build and it might take a few moments and then you simply sign it, send it to your device, um, and test it out. And I'll show you guys that momentarily. Cool. So build succeeded. Simply select on distribute. We'll do ad hoc. Select your uh, signing identity. Save as. It'll ask where you want to save it. I'll go ahead and put it on the desktop. And you'll put in your password. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Great, just like that. So now all you want to do is plug in your device, that you, uh, your real world device. And now I'm going to go ahead and install it and then I'll run it.
Cool. So that's exactly how it works on Android. It's super easy to use. We saw the uh, first splash script walkthrough and then the actual application loaded. Uh, very easy, very simple, very straightforward. <coughs> now um, you could do the same thing for iOS. Um, we see here I'm on Windows though, so I can't do it for iOS. Um, if you want to rename your project, simply right click the solution and click on properties. Um, you can leave the assembly name the, the same and the default space name the same, um, but select on assembly information. Go ahead and change the title here to, o, to from OD apps view to whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, same thing with the product and select on OK. Um, also to select your package manifest information, change your display name there. The description, um, leave this the same. Um, you can go to visual assets and if you have a 400 by 400 image, um, the one that's like here, the app icon, you simply click these three uh, menus here and you'll be able to select your image and you can generate a visual asset for all of your uh, universal Windows projects. So on any Windows device, uh, platform or computer that you're running this application all those icons could be generated with this visual asset generator and it does all of these here um, so we can close out of that close out of here um, close out of these sources there and the next thing here so for iOS if we come in here to properties from right clicking the menu we'll see a few different things on application we can change the uh, not the assembly name but um, let's see here, the, um, so yeah, there's actually nothing there in the properties that you really um, have much to do with, but you'll actually double click this info.plsit, um, and here you'll actually be able to change the application name, the bundle identifier, um, and a few other things like the build number, deployment. Um, but you might as well just leave this here um, targeting those devices uh, same thing visual assets so launch images now this is where you'll want to go to your assets catalog and assets and same thing with the app icon we can see here if we double click the um, the assets we see here the app icon assets here you can go ahead and replace all of these app icon assets with your own we have launch images same thing now the app is set to launch in portrait mode by default you can change that to landscape and um, force one or the other and again you can just go ahead and set your resource files there continuing on with the info.plst um, all of the capabilities are properly set and that's pretty much all you need to do for um, the iOS side the last thing to do is for Android um, coming in here you're going to want to right click the solution and select on properties um, leave the assembly name and name default space the same you want to come in here to Android manifest and go ahead and change your application name the package name and um, you can leave the version name and version uh, number the same um, these are all set appropriately so you don't have to change those um, and I think that's pretty much it for the Android side. Oh yeah, so if you're doing package and signing, um, you could save all of your signing APK data here instead of doing it um, where I did it there on the end side with ad hoc or Google Play Store. Um, and that pretty much references on how to build, deploy, and use uh, this uh, application. Thank you guys again for the purchasing of this solution. If you need any help setting it up or customizing it, please feel free to reach out. I'm available and can help you in any way possible. Um, in the future, there will be more updates coming soon, such as you know, being able to include user agents, push notifications, including CSS within the styling of the website on the actual web view. QR code reader that links to a web view of maybe a coupon code or wherever that QR generator code is taking them 
AdMom integration, and a few other things that we also have lined up as far as theming and styling of this actual application. So thank you again for your time and uh, utilizing this code. Take care. Bye-bye.